Hi, I'm Baltazar Mercado, Product Marketing Manager here at Renaissance Electronics, and today I'm joined by Michael Quirk, Product Marketing Engineer. And we're going to be talking to you about the PET Activity Monitor, a demo reference design powered by our S3A3 MCU. How are you doing today, Mike? Baltazar, I'm doing really good. Thank you. Excellent. Then let's jump right into it. Okay. So tell me a little bit about the PET Activity Monitor. The PET Activity tracks steps, mm -hmm. and it tracks uh, vocalizations or barks or... Today's world, a uh, good majority of the pets are actually overweight. Uh, by seeing and being able to track this data, you can actually work with your pet to help them get in a healthier state of life. I hear you guys work really hard on this software. Uh, yes, we do. We spend a lot of time on, on the software. So can you tell me what version of the Synergy software package or SSP did you guys use? At the time, we used the SSP version 1.4. That was the current release when we started the development. And did you run into any software development issues? As a matter of fact, we did. There is a feature of the S3 MCU that we were using uh, or wanted to use. Mm -hmm. That is uh, the ability to use the high-speed oscillator or HOKO to be able to drive the USB clock. The default parameters of that have to be set through a protected register. There was no API call in the current SSP at that time. And how did you guys get around this issue? The only way we were able to get around this issue is we communicated this issue to the development team. In that process of their research, they came back and pointed us to a function that was weakly defined and could be overridden by writing a new piece of code using the same function name and the same arguments to be able to clear and set this appropriately. They do plan to implement this in a future release of the SSP. That's excellent to hear, Mike. And now we're gonna take it over to Dan, our senior application engineer, who's gonna talk a bit more about our hardware. Dan? Hi, Balthazar. So in your design, you're using button cell batteries. What challenges were considered during the design definition? We decided to use a typical 2032 coin cell battery, as these are readily available. But we quickly realized that the user was going to have to change these out pretty often. To reduce this waste, we decided to go with a rechargeable lithium ion coin cell battery instead. That also saves on cost in the long run. So what other issues were discovered making this choice? The first problem we encountered was that we now needed a charging circuit in our system to charge the battery safely and to protect the surrounding environment. To do this, we needed a charger with a programmable current, as this low-capacity battery needs a low current to charge. We also were looking for something with a pre-charge condition and an end-of-charge condition. Furthermore, when the user plugs in the system, they might want to transfer data immediately, even if the battery is depleted. To solve these issues, we use the ISL9230, as it has a separate power supply line for the system load as well as for the battery. It also solves all the charging requirements. It also has two LEDs that show the system is plugged in and also if the battery is charging. So let me ask you, Dan, were there any other issues? Yes, there was also a second problem of the input voltage. A CR2032 starts at 3 volts and goes all the way down to 2 volts when depleted, whereas a lithium-ion battery starts at 4.2 volts and goes down to 2.6 volts. In the meantime, our system is running on a constant 3-volt supply. With such a run range on the battery and the voltages required for this design, how did you work around this? To fix the issue, we changed the power supply from a boost apology to a buck boost apology. Using the ISL9120 buck boost switching regulator, we could then take the uh, higher voltage and buck it down to 3 volts, take the lower voltage and boost it up to 3 volts, and when the battery is right around 3 volts, the ISL9120 can alternate between buck and boost mode as well as pass the battery voltage directly to the system load, thereby saving the switching losses. The ISL9120 is up to 98% efficient, and even at light loads, it can be over 90% efficient. So let me ask Dan, what if the user wants to use a standard CR2032? Yes, it is still possible to use a CR2032 by changing the jumpers on the board. The jumpers allow the user to bypass the charging circuit, and the ISL9120 is still an excellent choice for the power management. If the user wants to, they can also use a lithium-ion battery with a little bit higher capacity. It doesn't actually need to be in a coin cell form factor. However, you will need to change the resistors that set the charger so that the system is safe for that battery. Thank you for that, Dan. 
And to learn more about the Pet Activity Monitor, please visit this URL. And thank you for joining us. Thank you.